guys, it's Mr. Romeo, and today I'm going to talk to you about sugar cane. No, come on. <laughs> Old lady cane. That'd be the worst video ever. No. Canines. Not even close. Come on, man. <laughs> I can't think of anything else with cane. I'll handle this. Today I'm going to talk to you about oh, oh, oh hurricane. You're actually right. Let's do this. Hurry. Why? What's the rush? It's a hurricane. If we don't hurry, we're going to miss it. Dude, hurricanes last for a few weeks. We have plenty of time. Well, then why do they call it a hurricane? They should call it a lasts a few weeks a cane. What? That is the worst name ever. But besides, hurricanes aren't called hurricanes all over the world. Right, Roberta? Correct. Here, look at this. The general name for these types of storms is tropical cyclones. But depending where they are, they could have a different name. When they form in the Atlantic or Eastern Pacific, which is the orange part of the map, the storms are called hurricanes. In the Northwestern Pacific, or the green part of the map, they are called typhoons. And in the South Pacific and Indian Ocean, which is the purple part of the map, they are called cyclones. They should just give them one name. Yeah, what do you suggest? How about Pete Peterson? That's not actually a bad idea. Imagine watching the Weather Channel and hearing that name. Hi, I'm John Abernathy with your weather on the ones, the twos, the threes, and the fours. There's a gigantic Pete Peterson hitting your local neighborhood. Wind, rain, all that bad stuff. Just everybody just get out. What? But besides their names, there's something else that's different about them too. Right, Roberta? Yes! These storms rotate counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. See, aren't hurricanes interesting? Uh, actually, they're called Pete Petersons now. Oh, my bad, but anyway, we're in the perfect time to see a hurricane. They only occur during a certain time of the year. At least I think so. Isn't that right, Roberta? Oh, yeah! Think about what month it is for you right now. Now, find where you live on the map. Depending on where you are, you could be in the hurricane season. The Atlantic's hurricane season is from June through November, when the storms take shape on the coast of Africa. The Eastern Pacific season runs from mid-May through November. In the Northwestern Pacific, typhoons occur year-round, but peak in late August. In the Southwestern Pacific, the cyclone season begins in November and ends in April. In the Indian Ocean, hurricane season is from April to December for the northern parts, and from October to May in the southern regions. Uh, that's interesting and all, but she's kind of wrong. How so? Uh, they're called Pete Petersons now. Says who? That guy. You supposed to use soap in the shower or soup? Cause I'm confused. Uh, can we just meet this hurry? I mean, Pete Peterson now? Sure, where is he? Mm, you know what, man? Come to think of it, hurricanes are way too big to talk to. That'd be like talking to 20 tornadoes from my tornado video. So what do we do? We have to go somewhere higher and bigger so we can see a hurricane from above. Here, follow me. Does anybody have a really tall ladder? Whoa, there it is, Roberta. A hurricane. Come on down. Our first contestant is from Union Beach, New Jersey. He has a robot with him and he loves little baby birds, Mr. DeMeo. Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, there's no everybody, man. It's just me and Roberta. It doesn't even matter because you win a new car. How are you going to get a car all the way up here? Uh oh, I didn't even think about that. Um, all right, I guess in that case, you win a picture of a car that I drew. How are you going to get a picture of a car? Do you like my picture? Who is this guy? I don't know. I'm a big old Pete Peterson. So Pete, I have a few questions, but first, you are huge. How big are hurricanes really? Well, before we talk about size, let's talk about how a hurricane is measured. Some judge them by their diameter, or how big it is from one side of a circle to the next. Others judge them by their wind speed. But all hurricanes are put into different groups called categories to determine how big they are. 
Wait, categories or cats named Corey? Because I love when cats had the human name. Oh, like when a cat's named like Bill? Yeah, yes. Or James? Yeah, yes. Well, it's definitely categories, but here, look at this. Hurricanes are broken into categories based off of their wind speed. A category one has speeds of 74 to 95 miles per hour. A category two has speeds of 96 to 110 miles per hour. A category three has speeds of 111 to 129 miles per hour. A category four has speeds of 130 to 156 miles per hour. And a category five, the strongest category, has speeds of 157 miles per hour or higher. As you can probably guess, the higher the category, the more damage and destruction is caused. So even though hurricanes are measured by their wind speed, how big are you actually? Well, I'm about the size of an average hurricane. And an average hurricane is 100 miles long from side to side. To imagine how big that is, Think of the Empire State Building. Now picture 363 of them. That's how big a hurricane is from one side to another. Well, what about their height? Why do you want to know my height? Well, what if we want to go to Disney World and we want to go on a ride and there's a height limit? I ain't going on Splash Mountain alone because you're a little bit of a hurricane boy. Hmm, good point. Well, the average hurricane's height is around 50,000 feet. That's about 20,000 feet higher than a plane you would take to fly somewhere. Fly somewhere like Disney World? <coughs> and go on something like that Splash Mountain? <coughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a gigantic hurricane. I can't exactly go on Splash Mountain. What, do you expect me to go on it alone like I'm Steven Glansberg? Yes. Fine. But before I go, I have a few more questions. Well, come on down and ask. As long as it's not about Splash Mountain. Fine, I guess I'll ask a different question then, but... Anyway, every single time I see a hurricane, I always notice that one section in the middle. It always kind of looks like a donut. What's that thing called? Well, that hole in the center is called the eye. The eye is an area of very low air pressure at the center of a hurricane. There are usually no clouds in the eye and the wind is pretty calm. But don't let that fool you. The most dangerous part of the storm is at the edge of the eye called the eye wall. The heaviest precipitation and strongest winds are found there. Speaking of dangerous, do hurricanes cause a lot of damage? Oh yeah, big time. Hurricanes cause over $100 billion in damages each year. Hey Roberta, didn't a hurricane hit my hometown a few years ago? Yes, it's true. In 2012, Hurricane Sandy hit your hometown of Union Beach, New Jersey. The storm cost over $75 billion in damages. Wow, I remember like it was yesterday. The school I teach in was destroyed. So many kids that I taught weren't in their homes. Even today, kids still aren't in the houses that they lived in. Here, take a look at some photos from Hurricane Sandy. Damage isn't the only thing that happens when a hurricane strikes. Hundreds of people die from hurricanes when they occur. Whoa, is there something we should do to stay safe in a hurricane? Uh, yeah, evacuate. Wait, evacuate or vacuum grapes? I didn't hear what you said. What? I said evacuate. It means to leave. Go somewhere safe and listen to your parents, guardians, and loved ones. The last thing you should do is stay and think you'll be safe. And after you get to where you need to go, you can vacuum some grapes, ride Splash Mountain, name your cat Cory, whatever you want to do. You're weird. Wait, before you go, I have one final question. I'm not going on Splash Mountain with you. All right, different question then. You do not have to vacuum grapes. All right, fine, really different question. How do hurricanes form? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Here, look at this. Hurricanes generally form over warm waters near the equator, which is the dotted line in this picture. Hurricanes form by warm air above the water rising. This creates an area of low pressure beneath the surface. 
air from the surrounding area push in and try to fill the area with low air pressure. This makes it become warm and moist and it begins to rise. As it continues to rise, the surrounding air tries to fill it. This process keeps happening until the air and water forms clouds. Eventually, the clouds and winds start to spin around as they're fueled by the ocean's heat and water vapor. Wow, it's almost like hurricanes are really big engines. But if you're an engine, what's your gas? Well, warm and moist air could be considered our fuel. No, I meant do you have gas? Because it smells like the nasties in here. The nasties? You heard me. I'm talking them big, stinky, nasties. Uh, sorry. Could you ever forgive me? Yes, but only if you do one thing. Four hours and one trip to Disney World later. What's that stack? My uncle invented the jelly bean. My favorite color is 22. Look what I can do. I survived the Titanic twice. <laughs>